In the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Good evening, everyone. As we come together this evening to celebrate this Holy Mass, each of us brings our own stories, which may consist of worries, anxieties, or fears. And if this is the case, I invite you to place them on the altar and entrust them to the one whom our gospel tells us heals his suffering people. And remembering that God's compassion has no end, we now call to mind our sins. Lord Jesus, you heal the sick. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you forgive sinners. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you give us yourself to heal us and bring us strength. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And let us pray. Keep your family safe, O Lord, with unfailing care, that relying solely on the hope of heavenly grace, they may be defended always by your protection. Through Christ our Lord. A reading from the book of Job. Job began to speak. Is not man's life on earth nothing more than pressed service? His time no better than hired drudgery. Like the slave sighing for the shade, or the workman with no thought but his wages. Months of delusion I have assigned to me. Nothing for my own but nights of grief. Lying in bed, I wonder, when will it be day? Risen, I think, how slowly evening comes. Restlessly, I fret till twilight falls. Swifter than a weaver's shuttle, my days have passed, unvanished, leaving no hope behind. Remember that my life is but a breath and that my eyes will never again see joy.
The second reading, a reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. I do not boast of preaching the gospel, since it is a duty which has been laid on me. I should be punished if I did not preach it. If I had chosen this work myself, I might have been paid for it. But as I have not, it is a responsibility which has been put into my hands. Do you know what my reward is? It is this. In my preaching, to be able to offer the good news free and not insist on the rights which the gospel gives me. So though I am not a slave of my, any man, I have made myself the slave of everyone, so as to win as many as I could. For the weak, I made myself weak. I made myself all things to all men in order to save some at any cost. And I still do this for the sake of the gospel, to have a share in its blessing. The word of the Lord. of the world, says the Lord. Anyone who follows me will have the light of life. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. On leaving the synagogue, Jesus went with James and John straight to the house of Simon and Andrew. Now Simon's mother-in-law had gone to bed with fever, and they told him about her straight away. He went to her, took her by the hand, and helped her up, and the fever left her and she began to wait on them. That evening after sunset, they brought to him all who were sick and all those who were possessed by devils. The whole town came crowding round a door, and he cured many who were suffering from diseases of one kind or another. He also cast out many devils, but he would not allow them to speak because they knew who he was. In the morning, long before dawn, he got up and left the house and went off to a lonely place and prayed there. Simon and his companions set out in search of him, and when they found him, they said, Everybody is looking for you. He answered, Let us go elsewhere to the neighboring country towns, so that I can preach there too, because that is why I came. And he went all through Galilee, preaching in their synagogues and casting out devils. The Gospel of the Lord. Our Gospel this evening contains two very important and necessary lessons for us to learn and follow if we truly wish to grow in our discipleship. The first one can be found in the story of Jesus healing Peter's mother-in-law and how she immediately gets up to serve after she is healed. However, this story, if we look at it as a whole and not just a particular part of it, it gives us a few great examples of Christian service in which we're all called to follow. Firstly, we have the example of Christ himself. As this story reveals, he was always ready to serve. He had just left the synagogue after preaching and freeing a man possessed by an unclean spirit. 
and so was in no doubt in need of rest himself. The last thing he probably wanted was a fresh call upon him. But no sooner had Jesus left the synagogue and entered Peter's house than the insistent cry of human need was at him. Yet he didn't claim he was tired and must rest. Rather, he answered that cry straight away and without complaint. But just how willing are we to respond to the cry or the need of others, especially if we are tired or had a long day ourselves? Do we really respond straight away or perhaps make excuses and leave it until later or not respond at all, hoping someone else will respond? And if that is the case, what does that really say about our discipleship? Secondly, when Peter's mother-in-law was cured, immediately she began to serve. She realized that she had been given back her health to spend in the service of others. She wanted no fussing, only to get on with things. And it is in this that Peter's mother-in-law is a model of discipleship for us, in that she used the gift of health that she was given for the benefit of others. And here lies the first lesson for us. We should always remember that if God gave us the precious gift of health and strength, he gave it that we might always use it in the service of others, building up his kingdom, each in our own way, as Peter's mother-in-law did. And being tired is no excuse for failing in this, as it didn't stop Jesus. The second lesson this gospel contains for us is the importance of prayer. In the morning long before dawn, our gospel told us, Jesus went off to a deserted place to pray. No matter how busy he was, he always managed to find time to pray. The day before, he cured many sick people and driven out many demons. The whole town came crowding round the door, the gospel told us. After such a day, you might think he might want to lie on in bed a bit longer. But no, the first thing on his agenda was to pray. Even before he started his day's travel, preaching, and carrying out good works. But what about us? Do we make our prayer time a priority every day and pray from the heart and not just rhyme off prayers as there is a huge difference between the two? If the Son of God found it important to pray, how much more do we need to pray and make it a priority in our lives? In fact, the more we need to accomplish in life, the more we do need to pray. Because when prayer is a priority in our lives, there will be order and we will receive this spiritual food or fuel to tackle the rest of our obligations. But more importantly, prayer will help us grow closer to God. And by placing our daily worries and concerns, our ups and downs in life, before our compassionate God in prayer, 
we will find that strength, peace and hope we need to carry on when the storms of life do arise, just as Jesus did. We stand there to profess our faith. <clears throat> I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Job poured out his heart to God as he struggled with his misfortunes. May we too turn to God in our times of distress and hopelessness, knowing that he always hears our prayers. For the Pope and the Christian community, that we may always be open to the cry of the needy and those who call out for healing. Lord, hear us. For those who live with illness and anxiety, and for those in our community who need our prayers at this time, may they find hope, and may we be instruments of consolation and of healing for one another. Lord, hear us. When we meet times of uncertainty and busyness, may we know the value of spending time in prayer. Lord, hear us. May we always have a deep respect for the life of each individual, especially the life of the unborn. Lord, hear us. For our children and their parents, that they may grow together in the love of God by devoting a period of time each day in prayer together. Lord, hear us. We pray for our dead. We pray for the recently deceased Peter Hackett, Teresa Beatty, Carmel Renshaw Niebreen, Rosa Simones, Hannah Henry, Patsy Moore, and Simon Wallace Ballyoran Heights. As yet, we have no funeral arrangements for Simon. At this time, we pray for Maliki McAlinden, Mary McCaffrey, Lily Brennan, Marie Jackson, Mary Violet and Michael Joseph Gilfoyle. We pray especially during this Holy Mass for Joan Ty, whose month's mind occurs at this time, Deacon Martin Barlow, whose first anniversary occurs at this time, Winifred Kelly, Manuel Gutteris Correa. We pray tomorrow for Martin Connolly, whose first anniversary occurs, Ava Fernan, Stephen McCann, Michael Breen, Jimmy and Ina Lavery, Neil Breen, Eddie Craney, and Annie Donnelly. May their souls and souls of all the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. And for a few moments in the quietness of our own hearts, we now make our own private prayers and petitions.
Lord, hear us. <clears throat> Gracious and compassionate God, may the words that we have heard this evening find a home with us, heal our brokenness, and be a light for us on our journey through the coming week. We make these our prayers through Christ our Lord. We now have our Sunday collection, please. And as a collection be taken up, I just bring a few notices to your attention. Next Sunday is the 11th of February, which is World Day of the Sick, and it's also the memorial of Our Lady of Lourdes. And to mark this, there will be anointing of the sick next Saturday morning during the 10 a.m. morning mass in St. Patrick's. So next Saturday morning, we will have anointing of the sick during mass in St. Patrick's. And as part of the 1500 anniversary of St. Bridget, the staff and pupils of the Bun Skull will hold a bilingual mass celebrated by Sa Father Frank next Friday here in this church at 10 o'clock and all are welcome. And the Armada Yasin pilgrimage to Lourdes will take place this year from the 12th to the 17th of May. The fare is 895 euro per person sharing and if interested the contact names and numbers are in the bulletin. And we offer our deepest congratulations to our, to our organist Martin White who was recently awarded the BEM for his work and service, as well as his devotion to church music in his role as organist in our Ma Cathedral. So Martin, on behalf of all of us, I offer you our deepest congratulations. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O Lord our God, who once established these created things to sustain us in our frailty, grant, we pray, that they may become for us now the sacrament of eternal life through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by his birth he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state, and by his suffering cancelled out our sins. By his rising from the dead he has opened the way to eternal life, and by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so with the company of angels and saints we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim.
indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. the mystery of faith. <laughs> Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, and Damon our Archbishop, Michael our Auxiliary Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. <laughs> through him, and with him, and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
at the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be consoled. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall have their fill.
Breathe in me, O Holy Spirit, that my thoughts may all be holy. Act in me, O Holy Spirit, that my work too may be holy. Draw my heart, O Holy Spirit, that I love but what is holy. Strengthen me, O Holy Spirit, to defend all that is holy. Guard me then, O Holy Spirit, that I always may be holy. Let us pray. <coughs> o God, who have willed that we be partakers in the one bread and the one chalice, grant us, we pray, so to live, that made one in Christ, we may joyfully bear fruit for the salvation of the world. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God.